You know, I uh, talk to a lot of people um, every day, all day long, talking to people, counseling people, helping people. And um, I ran across a friend of mine, and uh, we were talking, and she was, she, uh, she's a believer, she goes to church, and um, she was just struggling, you know. She was about to lose her house. She didn't know where she was going to go. And, um, and she didn't have really no income. Um, her disability was taking forever, you know, through the court and everything. And so she had no income. All she had was a chunk, a chunk of money, and that's all that she was living off of. And so she, she was like, you know, I just, I don't know what to do, you know. I was like, well, you know what, let's just wait and let's pray that God is going to do something for you, that God's going to open the, the door for you. And she's like, okay, okay. And so she had till I think, next month before she lost her house, before she couldn't afford to pay it anymore. And so I had I seen her recently, and, and she says, you know what? I'm like, what? She goes, something amazing happened. And I'm like, okay, tell me what happened. And she's like, God opened a door. And I'm like, okay, tell me more. And then she said, well, um, I met a lady in church that said that they will buy my house and I could live in their house. And they would pay me mortgage for the house that I'm living in. I was like, okay. So basically you're going to be switching houses and you're going to get a little extra money. And she's like, yeah. And she goes, and I get to keep my animals because that was her biggest thing, her animals. And I said, wow, that is amazing. And she goes, man, I just don't deserve it. And I was like, you don't deserve it? And she goes, I just don't deserve it. And I said, sis, you do deserve it. This is what you have been praying for. This is the open door that you have been, you have been believing for. And the only problem she had was receiving it. Everything that she was praying for. She had it right there in the palm of her hand. Everything, the house, she got to keep her animals. She even had money coming in. And she was like, I just don't deserve it. And she just looked down and just sorrow came on her face. And I said, no, you do deserve that. I said, God has great things for you this year. And he is going to get you through this year. And you just got to receive it. God's opening the door for you. This is what you've been praying for. And she's like, yeah, you're right. This is what I've been praying for. I'm like, yes. I said, you got to thank God for it. And she goes, you're right. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm excited. I'm happy. And it, it, it shocked me because she had everything she wanted, and then she didn't receive it. And I'm like, wow. And then that, you know, just even ever since I had talked to her, and I was like thinking, and then God reminded me, you know, people, we all, he wants to give his goodness to you every day. But sometimes we have trouble believing and we have trouble receiving. So I want to take you through the scriptures. I want to touch on two uh, people in the Bible that have received the goodness of God in their lives. Because this is the year of God's goodness. Amen. How many of y'all receive? This is my year of God's goodness. We've got to receive. we got to believe it and we've got to receive it. Okay. Believing is key to receiving. Even if you don't see it. Believing is key to receiving, even if you don't see it. Okay? If you're taking notes, you should write that down. Let's go to Psalms 3119 and the Amplified Classic. We're going to stick in the Amplified this time. Psalms 3119. I have my Bible here. Psalms 3119 in the Amplified Classic version, which is the first Amplified before they came out with the new one. It says, oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear, revere, and worship you. How many of y'all, is that you this morning? Do y'all fear God? Do you worship God? Do you revere him? He says, goodness, which you have wrought for those who trust and take refuge and believe in you before the sons of man. You know, Pastor Bird talked about wrought. You know, I've been serving in the nursery all p pretty much the last couple of weeks and talks or nursery. Last Wednesday was the first service I think I've been in here since the beginning of the year. And I was kind of telling Pastor Bert what I was talking about. And he was like, you know what? You're kind of piggybacking off of what I've been teaching. I was like, I didn't even know. I was just in the spirit. I was like, that's just what God has for us. Okay, so rot. And I remember him talking about rot. Rot. And I looked it up because I like to look up words. And rot means worked into shape by artistry or effort. 
And that reminded me of someone making a pottery, you know, and they have that wheel and they're having that mud and they're just creating a, a, some kind of pottery. That's what God is doing for you. He is creating, he is orchestrating, he is being so artistic in creating the goodness he has for you. Rot. That's what rot is. Oh, how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear, revere, and worship you. Goodness which you have worked and shaped by artistry for those who trust and take refuge in before the sons of man. How many of you know, how many of y'all know that in order to trust in someone, you have to believe in them. Am I right? Because you're not going to trust somebody if you don't believe in them. Trust and believe go hand in hand. Trust and believe. Okay? So let's go to Ephesians 2, 7. If you're writing notes, I want you to write this. Our unbelief can stop our receiving. Our unbelief can stop our receiving. And in Ephesians 2, 7, in the Amplified Classic, it says, He did this that he might clearly demonstrate the ages to come, the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, and his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Jesus Christ towards us in Jesus Christ. And in this scripture, what it's describing is the immeasurable, the limitless, the surpassing. Those are what describes what God has for you this year. What God has for you this year is limitless. What God has for you this year is surpassing. What God has for you this year is immeasurable, cannot be measured. What God has for you. This is describing his goodness and his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. Towards us. Can y'all say amen? amen? Let's go to Luke 130. Luke 130 through 35. And I want to take you to the first person that, you know, when I was uh, creating this message, you know, God dropped in my heart this story of Mary. And we're going to read it together. Starting in verse 30, it said, And the angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace, free, spontaneous, absolute favor, and loving kindness with God. And listen, you will become pregnant, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, eminent, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his forefather David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages. And of his reign, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no intimacy with any man as a husband? And then the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the shadow of the Most High will overshadow you like a shining cloud. And so the holy, pure, sinless thing, the offering, shall be born of you and would be called the Son of God. And so the angel was telling Mary the vision that God had for the world. He had to tell her. But he was not going to put, like, force this, this um, Jesus, you know, the spirit of Jesus the creation of life in her without her believing it. She had to believe first and then receive that miracle that was fixing to take place in her. She had to believe that. Let's, let's go to verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. And the angel left her. At that moment, she believed and at that very moment, life was created within her. And she received the most precious gift that we could ever receive. Amen. If Mary never believed it, where would we be? Man, can we just thank God for Mary for believing in the mission and vision of, of God to save us? Because she believed it. 
Your belief can change your whole destiny. Your belief can change your whole pathway. Your belief can change your whole day. Your belief will bring in what God has for you. You will receive that within you. Amen? I pray that we have a heart like Mary to receive and to believe the things of God. Amen? That we have a heart sensitive to understand, like, okay, God, let it be done as you say. I will receive that. I will do it. Let's, let's run with this vision. Amen? You know, another character, well, not character, <laughs> Another uh, person in the Bible is, is David. And, you know, David, how many of y'all know the story of David? It's got a couple of y'all, okay. How many of y'all don't know the story of David? Everybody else, no one's no one supposed to raise their hand? No, nobody's, okay. Everybody knows the story of David. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell it anyways because it's very interesting. You know, the Bible says that David was a guy after God's own heart, right? A man after God's own heart. That's what the Bible describes David. But you know, David did a lot of bad things. He was doing so well. He was ruling. He was listening to his prophet Nathan. He was doing what God had asked him to do. But then he saw a woman bathing. And that wasn't his wife. That was his prized top soldier, Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. She was bathing, and her name was Bathsheba. She was taking a bath. If y'all can remember that, bath, Bathsheba. And so he saw her, Bathsheba, bath, taking a bath. And um, he liked what he saw. Okay? He loved what he saw. And so he called her and he said, hey, I want you to bring her to my room. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm with Uriah. I am, I am married to, to him. And still they did. They, they slept together that night and she became pregnant. Someone say, uh-oh. Okay. This is David, the man after God's own heart. He slept with another woman, his prized soldier, one of his best, best friends, Uriah, his wife. And then he thought, oh, my goodness, how am I going to cover this up? So he goes, and he sends Uriah, and he calls Uriah. He said, hey, you did so good at war. I want you to come home, go be with your wife, stay the night with her, and eat what you need to do and get the strength and then go back to war. But he didn't do that because he thinks or he believed, why should I go home if my soldiers can't go home? I'm going to be, I sit down here at the door, and I will not see my wife. I will not be with her. I will not eat unless my soldiers get to go home. So, the, so King David was like, okay. So he tried it again. He did another attempt and tried to get them together, and David still said, uh, Uriah still said no. So then David resulted to murder. He had Uriah placed in the most fiercest battle on the front lines to have him killed, and they were to leave him there as instructed by King David. Remember, this is the man after God's own heart. Isn't that crazy? It's a crazy story. This is better than days of our lives. Okay, anyways, and so, and then so what happened was that Uriah died, Bathsheba, she mourned for her husband, she loved her husband, and then they got married, King David and her, they got married, they had the baby, and a lot of stuff happened after that, but you know, even through all of that, King David still experienced the goodness of God. God was still willing to shower him with this goodness. Let's go to Psalms 27, 13 through 14. Psalm 27, 13 through 14. This is the Psalm of David. He said, what, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait and hope for and expect the Lord. That was his prayer. That was his prayer. But I know in our lives, it's hard to wait on God when there's a lot of attacks in your life. There's a lot of things that can come against you. There's a lot of uh, words that can be said against you. There's a lot of um, 
illnesses or, or whatever is attacking your family can come against you. But in, in 14 it says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait. And I say on the Lord. Yes, that's the King James Version. So I, what I want to do is a little, a little demonstration this morning. If I can get the four ushers to come up here, please. The four ushers. Can, I give, can, you, can we applaud our ushers? Aren't they amazing? Okay. If we can have all of y'all stand on that side. And then y'all in a line and then y'all face me. Okay. Brother Ruin, Hector, get, get right here in the front. Okay. So y'all know the goodness of God is real. Okay. The goodness of God is always there available to you. But... There are going to be obstacles. So, Brother Reuben, you're going to be the goodness. You're the goodness of God. Okay? Unfortunately, gentlemen, you are the ones that keep us from getting from to the goodness of God. Okay? So, Brother Hector, he's, he's more like, no, it's impossible. You can't do it. You can't make it. You're saying, no way, ain't going to happen. You're saying, don't even look over here. Don't even look over here. Don't even look at the goodness. And so all these, these obstacles, they're like this. Y'all do this. Okay? Y'all are trying to block it. I'm trying to see Brother Ruben. Brother Ruben, wave at me back there. Wave at me. Goodness, there's the goodness. But we have the impossible. We have no way. Don't, we have the other one say, no, don't look. But goodness is way over there. That's you guys. Goodness is way over there. But you've got to get through all these obstacles that's going on in your lives. You've got to get through all of this to get to goodness. To get to the goodness. Because you're always going to have obstacles. Life ain't going to be easy. News. Did y'all know that? Broadcast and learn. Okay. Life ain't easy, but the goodness is always there at the end of the row waiting for you. God's goodness, God's provision, God's mercy, God's, God's help, God's healing, it's there waiting for you. But are you believing it? Are you receiving it? That's up to you. Can we give it up for our ushers? Thank you, guys. Y'all may take a seat. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all doing that little demonstration for me. Little, little demo. I want to do, I do that for the youth, like an illustration, demonstration, illustration. But we can't faint. We can't grow weary. We've got to keep believing the goodness of God. Amen. In the message version, can we go to that in the message, Psalms 27, 13 through 14? In the message, it says, I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness. And the exuberant earth, stay with God, take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again, stay with God. Can we say stay with God? Stay with God. Amen. Is that, is that the end of it, Sister Leslie? I believe it is. Okay, let's go to, hold on one second. Y'all know the scripture that says, taste and see that the Lord is good? Y'all know that scripture? Y'all hear, y'all heard it several times you know, Pastor Burr and I, we've experienced a lot of God's goodness this, this past year. You know, we've got into a building. Can we give God a praise for this building? Um, you know, Pastor Burr told the story about our stove. Um, but how many know women tell stories a lot better? Okay. Anyways, no one wants to say nothing. Okay. <laughs> Honey, I have the mic now. Okay. I have the mic now. He's always picking on me. Okay. Anyways, we went, we needed a stove because our oven broke. And so my dad um, and my mom and us two, we went to Lowe's or Odessa, Home Depot. Yeah, forgot where we went. Anyways, and so we went looking for a stove. We were ready to spend about $500 on the stove. And so I went and I, and I told the lady, hey, I'm needing a stove by Thanksgiving because it was literally that next week. It was a Friday before Thanksgiving. I need a stove. And I said, we're, gonna, we're willing to pay 500 We need it today. Now we're going to take it home. Okay. So I said, I like this one and this one. Can you see if I have any of these in stock? 
And they looked, and she's like, no, we don't have any of these in stock. And I said, well, what do you have in stock? And so she goes in the computer, and she's gone about 15 minutes. She comes back, and she says, we have a stove. Um, it's an $800 stove. It's boxed up. It's way in the storage at the top. We're going to have to get the lift down. Um, she said, but what I can do, I'm going to give you a good, good deal. I was like, okay. I said, um, what's the deal? She said, well, I can give you this stove for $175. And I said, are you talking about the whole stove? Are you talking about just the top? Or like, <laughs> I didn't believe it. There you go, my belief. I didn't believe it. I was like, are you talking about the, just the top or the bottom or what? She goes, no, the whole stove. I'm like, the whole stove? Like, the whole stove. And she's like, yes, the whole stove. I couldn't believe Could y'all believe that? That's a steal. Brand new, not still in the box. Glass top. Sam, was it Samsung? Whirlpool? I don't know what it is. Samsung Whirlpool. And I'm like, and my belief, I was like, hmm, okay. And she said, um, let me pull it up on the computer. And she pulled it up. And I said, this whole stove for $175. She said, yes, plus 20% off. I'm like, we'll take it. But my belief was kind of, I didn't, that was kind of crazy. That was a steal. And I said, hey, do you have another one? Because we need one for the church. <laughs> and they're like, no, I'm sorry, we don't have another one. I'm like, okay. Now we know we can go to the just pop up. Maybe they'll give us a deal another day. She said, they just, this, she said, this is never happens. This, like, happens once in a long time. She said, I didn't even know it was up there. And they wanted us to get rid of it so for new inventory. I said, awesome. I said, we'll take it. Can we say the goodness of God? Yeah. That's the goodness of God right there. You know, and just a lot of stuff had happened these past two years that have experienced the goodness of God. But when it comes to taste and see that the Lord is good, you have to come to the point where you taste it yourself. You have to taste of God's goodness in your life yourself. And I'm sure we can all go around the room and say what God has done for your life this year so far. What God has done for your life last year. That you can just put a, a name on the top of your head, the goodness of God. But you have to taste it for yourself. The goodness of God. You know, Pastor Bert, his favorite restaurant. Do y'all know, know whose favorite restaurant is, Pastor Bert's? It's Hunan's in Big Spring. Chinese restaurant, Hunan's, if you can tell by the name. And then mine is Casablanca and Big Spring. Those are our two favorite restaurants. And, um, but if I were to tell Sister Yvonne, sis, you need to go try Casablanca. It is so good. If you ever go to Big Spring, it is so, so good. And she's going to be like, oh, well, I've never tried it. Then she ain't going to know what's good. you got to taste for yourself that Casablanca is good. I can just tell you all day long that it's good. I can tell you all day long that God's good, but if you haven't experienced God's goodness in your life, you're not going to believe it. You've got to experience God's goodness for yourself. Taste and see. You've got to taste it for yourself. Amen? Amen. Let's go to this scripture, and I'm almost done. Psalms 65, 11. Psalms 65, 11. Psalm 65, 11. Are y'all getting something this morning? I'm just teaching, teaching y'all this morning. Just teaching y'all. 65, 11. Thank you, sister. Okay, Psalm 65, 11. It says, you crown the year with your bounty and goodness. God, I told you we really like this scripture. I told my honey in bed before we go to bed. We were laying there. It's like, babe, you're going to love this last scripture. I said, it's going to get you saved. <laughs> if you're not saved already. <laughs> the, you crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. I don't want to focus on that part. I want to focus, you crown the year with your bounty and your goodness. God wants to crown your year with goodness. Gra God wants to crown your year with his bounty, with his goodness, amen? But this year is going to come with obstacles, which ain't nothing new than last year obstacles. And with these obstacles, you've got to see goodness at the end of the line waving at you. You've got to see goodness at you calling you and say, hey, I'm over here. Keep fighting. Keep pushing through because God's goodness is going to get you through. Amen? Amen. God's goodness. But we've got to believe it and we've got to receive it. But that believing and the receiving, it starts with you. God can't force you to believe. God can't force you to receive. But he wants you to receive. 
because he's a father that loves giving his children gifts. To him, it's Christmas every day. And you're his children. And I like to get a Christmas present from God. I bet you that would be crazy. So this morning, I hope and I pray that this teaching sunk into your heart and it sunk into your spirit and you got something from this teaching. Amen. Would y'all stand with me?